Welcome back everyone, it's Jennifer McGuire and I have another technique video for you today. This one is ombre stamping. Um, the ombre look is very popular right now, it has been for quite some time. And I wanted to be able to achieve the look of ombre in my stamping without having to have a bunch of different inks. So I'm going to show you how I did that today for these three ornaments. You can see they're light at the top and darker at the bottom. Now I'm going to be showing you all these techniques on that first card I showed you with three ornaments, but at the end I'm going to show you a few variations that are a little bit simpler. Now these images are all from the new Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber release, and this is part of the blog hop, so be sure to check out my blog for more information and giveaways. For the ornaments, I used this new Simon Says Stamp ornament set. It also has matching dies if you wanted them, and I picked out three large ornaments from this. Now when I stamp with solid images like these, I like to use a stamping mat. This is from Inka Dinka Do. It's just a little bit of cushion, not too much. You really don't need this. I've just found it helpful lately. I'm starting with the large ornament first, and I'm going to ink this up with one of the new Simon Says Stamp colors. Now, these were prototypes. If you order this ink, it actually has a beautiful label on it. But this is one of the newest colors from Simon Says Stamp called Coral Reef. It's the most beautiful coral color. Now when I stamp it, you'll see lots of ink goes onto the paper. It's a little bit splotchy and uneven, but that will dry perfectly smooth. Now for this technique, you could use a variety of inks. I think pigment ink would probably work for this too. I just really like how these Simon Says Stamp inks end up nice and solid. This is Mala Blue. It's a new color also, and it has a great kind of pool color to it that's just beautiful. And the last new color I'm using is Beanstalk Green. This is a gorgeous color too. It's a perfect green for Christmas. It's not too bright. Now before I go on to the ombre stamping, I'm going to go ahead and add the little hooks on the top of my ornaments. I'm using a little anti-stick powder tool here first because I'm going to do some heat embossing. I'm going to stamp the little top for the ornaments with Versamark ink. I happen to grab my old Versamark ink pad that my kids use. I don't know. It looks pretty bad there, doesn't it? But it still works, no problem. Now I'm going to heat emboss this with one of my favorite all-time uh, embossing powders. It's the Ranger Liquid Platinum. This is a nice kind of warm silver color, which I thought would be perfect for the top of these ornaments. But you could use a regular silver embossing powder if you wanted to, or you could even use a silver ink pad. Okay, after I've tapped off the excess, I'm just going to zap this with my heat gun, and there we have the perfect tops to our little ornaments here. You could skip the heat embossing and just use a gray ink if you wanted to. So now it's time to do the ombre stamping, where I end up with the ornaments light at the top and dark at the bottom. When I've done ombre stamp stamping in the first, I use a dark ink on the bottom, a medium shade of ink on the middle, and a light shade of ink at the top. But today I'm going to show you how to do it with just the addition of one single ink color for all of them. So first let's start by adding some of the darkness to the bottom of the ornaments. I'm going to start with the blue. I'm using the exact same blue ink that I used before, the Mala Blue ink from Simon Says Stamp. I'm inking the bottom of my stamp only, and I'm going to dab away a little bit of the ink so it kind of smooths it out, so there's a nice transition. And then I'm going to stamp this right on top of the image I already stamped once before. This is easy to do because it's a clear stamp. Now actually you could do this another time if you wanted it to be even darker, but you can see there's a little bit of darkness on the bottom of the ornament. We'll add some lightness to the top in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and do this with the other ornaments, added some of the coral reef to the bottom of this ornament. And then some of the beanstalk green I'm adding to the bottom of the green ornament. So I'm using the exact same color I used before, but just adding another layer of ink on the bottom. And if you wanted to, you could add a third layer of that same ink on the bottom to make it even darker. Now it's time to add the lightness to the top, and this is the only additional ink you need. This is the Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. Any white pigment ink would work here, but this is the best ink that I found, the best white pigment ink. I'm adding it to the top of the ornament, and I'm smoothing it out there so that there's a nice transition, stamping it right on top of what we've done before. And look at, you can see that starting to get light at the top. But I actually do this one more time just to add a little bit more um, distinction so you can see more variation between the top of the ornament and the bottom. So I'm dabbing away my excess here. This is just a dry cloth. I'm going to stamp this right on top. Now this will be wet for a little bit, so you could zap it with your heat gun. And if you see like splotchiness from that pigment ink kind of piling up there, you can just dab some of it away to kind of smooth it out. But there you see the lightness at the top of the ornament. And I'll zap that with my heat gun just to make sure that it doesn't smear. And there we have the ombre ornament with the, with the coral reef color there. Now I'm going to do the same with the other two ornaments. Again, I'm just inking up the top of the stamp only. The rest of the stamp is perfectly clean. And then I can just dab away some of the extra ink. I actually only did one layer of white on that ornament. That's all it needed. Now this green one, you can see that addition of white a little bit better because it's a little bit darker. 
So I'm just adding some white ink to the top, stamping it right on top of the first image. You can see it's pretty intense white, so I'm going to dab some of it away. You could use your finger if you wanted to. And there we have the ombre images. And the only extra ink you need is that white ink for all three ornaments. So I think this is a great technique. And I'll show you a simpler card that you can make since this does take a few steps. But let's go ahead and finish this one. So there you can see what the ornaments look like after they're dry. I wanted to add a big sentiment on this bottom area. So I'm using one of the new dies from Simon's Stamp that says Season's Greeting. I love handwritten sentiment dies. I just think they're a perfect touch to any card. I'm using some foil cardstock from Die Cuts with a View. It's a six by six pad. I really like this cardstock because it just adds a little bit of shine and something a little more interesting to your die cutting instead of just regular cardstock. So I did it from gold. I thought the gold would be fun for the holidays. Now this is a pretty intricate die, so when I have this die cut, I don't want to glue it down and have it kind of wonky. I want it to be nice and curved just like it was intended. So I'm actually taking the negative space and I'm going to tape this temporarily onto my card so that I could use it as like a guide for where I adhere my intricate die cut words. So I'm just using tiny little dots, teeny, teeny, tiny little dots of glossy accent, glossy accents in various places on the back of my die cut here. You could use multi-medium, which is a great adhesive also, but I just couldn't find mine on my desk, but don't tell anybody. So now I'm just going to pick it up with some tweezers and put it right into place. So by having that negative space there, I can use this as a guide to make sure that my word is laid out very nicely like it was intended by the die in the first place. So I'm just pressing it in with the back of my fingernail so I don't spread the glue around. But the nice thing is, is by having that negative space around there, you're actually not going to make a mess with the glue. So it's a pretty handy way to do it. This time I'm gonna start with the tweezers on the word so I can pick it up real easy. Just put a little few dots here and there of some glossy accents, this is super strong. And again, I'll place this right into the negative space. Now I still need to dot my eye and put the little apostrophe in seasons, but I have those, those little pieces got stuck in my die, so I'm gonna go poke them out and add them in the space. But I'm first gonna go ahead and take off this negative space. So I'm just gonna carefully peel it up and I did this after my adhesive dried, by the way, because I didn't want to ruin what I've glued down. And there we have the words perfectly on that little arch like they were intended. And I can go ahead and add in my little dot for the eye and the apostrophe in the, um, in the word seasons. Now this is a great way to um, add some fun to any die cutting, is to use a foil cardstock or a glitter paper. It just makes it so much more interesting. If you don't have foil paper, you could cover your die cut with gold embossing powder instead. Okay, so now we just have a few finishing touches to this card. I will say this card took a little more time than I would do for like a mass-produced card for the holiday, but for a special person, I think it's kind of fun. I decided to use some string to hang my ornaments from the top of the card. So I'm poking holes with my Tim Holtz paper piercer. I love this tool. And I have this gold thread. I just got this at a local craft store, and I'm loving it. I think I'll be using it on a lot of cards. I'll link to it in my YouTube description and on my blog. It's just so beautiful. It comes in silver too. I'm going to feed it with a needle and tape the end on the back and then I'm going to wrap it around the top of my card and tape the other end on the back too. Just make sure it's straight up to the top of your card. And I'm using some sort of like medical tape that I found is really handy. One of my readers told me about this and I love it. But you could use washi tape or scotch tape on the back. You could also just tie the ends into a knot on the back. But I like that the tape controls the string and keeps it from going crooked. So now I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for the other two ornaments. I'll show you one more so you can see it in action again. I tape the one end down. I'm kind of wasting a lot of string there. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to fold over, make sure it's straight, and tape the other end down. And then I'll cut off the excess. And I do the same for the third ornament too. Now before I add the finishing touches, I'm going to go ahead and put some foam tape on the back of this and add this to the front of a note card that I've cut that has a fold at the top. Now I used one of the Simon Says Stamp inside greeting messages for holidays. It's got a bunch of greetings perfect for the inside of note cards. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this on the inside of my note card with some Versamark ink and add some white embossing powder. I love that white greeting on the inside of this blue card. And by the way, this is Audrey Blue cardstock, which is one of my favorite colors from Simon Says Stamp. Okay, so now I am going to go ahead and add some finishing touches. This is one of the new packs of sequins from um, Simon's Stamp. It's a mix, a moonshine mix, and it has a three, I think three different sizes of sequins in it, and they're just the clear sequins that offer kind of a silvery shine. So I'm going to do a mix of these. You can see I've arranged them on my card, and I'm using my quick sticks to pick up the sequins and add them to the glue. 
Now I'm actually gluing these sequins on upside down. I just thought it would be fun so that they'd be little domes instead of like little cups on my paper. So in this case, I wanted a bigger kind of dot of my multi-matte medium so that it kind of fills that sequin, the back of the sequin. So it's a little dome. These super tiny sequins in this set are the perfect little domes to put on your cards. Just They kind of like gems, inexpensive, and they make it through the mail just fine if you use a strong adhesive like this multi-medium from Ranger. It has a matte finish, so if some squirts out the side, you don't have to worry about it. And I am using the back end of my quick sticks. People always ask me why I don't do this, why I don't take the back end of the quick sticks out, quick sticks out like I did here. And I usually just use my finger. I don't know. I just seem to have better luck with my finger. But with these tiny sequins, having that little pierce end here to help hold it in place really was helpful. But I feel like I'm performing surgery when I do this. But anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and add a cluster. I have three clusters of sequins in a kind of a visual triangle. And there we have our sequin placement. Now there's one last thing. I told you I put a lot into this card. One last thing I wanted to do. I wanted a bow at the top of these ornaments. I, this, I could totally have skipped this step. But I'm just taking some more of that metallic thread. I'm just tying it into a bow on its own. The way I do this is I tie a giant bow. And then I pull the ends while holding the knot to make it a tinier bow. So that's an easy way to make a super small bow. You can keep pulling the ends and just making sure it stays nice and tight. Now to add this to my card, I'm just using a super tiny dot of the multi-medium. Again, this stuff dries super clear and holds super tight. So you don't have to worry about being able to see it. And if you leave that there for a few minutes, that sucker won't come off. So it's a great way to add little things that you don't want to see the adhesive on. So I used a lot on this card. I used a lot of die cutting, a lot of finishing touches, a lot of stamping, and I think it works. But if you wanted to simplify it some, this card I did a lot of simplification. I did the ornaments the same, but I just heat embossed a greeting from a Simon Says Stamp stamp set, which I will link to. And then you see the strings. I stamped those strings and I stamped the bows. That's from another Simon Says Stamp stamp set. It's supposed to be bows that go on top of presents, but I thought they worked great on top of the ornaments too. Here you can see the sentiment. I think it works, gold heat embossed stamp sentiment works just as good as that gold foil die cut I did earlier. This one simplified even more, it's just one ornament. And again, I stamped and gold heat embossed the string and the little bow, added a few sequins also, and kept with a dark gray background to the card. One more example, this one's pretty simple also, but this time I put the sequins on the ornament itself. But on all of these, I use the ombre stamping technique, which is a great way to get more out of the inks you have and really kind of add some fun depth to your stamping. I really hope you enjoyed this technique. And remember, this card is part of the Simon Says Stamp blog hop, so be sure to head over to my blog to visit the other, um, other stops along the way. There will be lots of giveaways. If you're interested in the products, I link below to everything I used in the YouTube description, or you can head over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com. Once again, I appreciate you stopping by, and I hope you return again soon.